Hi, this is Mingyao from Ozen Engineering. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a 3D simulation to run on parallel in the Autodyne GUI. So here's a continuation of the model we had before. We did a 2D simulation. Let me change that name there. So this is my 2D simulation in Explicit Dynamics. And this is my 3D simulation in Explicit Dynamics. Now, as you see, uh, we can do most of the analysis in Explicit Dynamics. But some of the explosive specific post processing and you know, Olarian, multi material Olarian post processing in general is uh, more convenient in Autodyne. In fact, it may make sense for you to run the whole simulation in Autodyne because then we can monitor the progress of the simulation. There's a lot of interactive operations. Unfortunately, for Autodyne right now, in the workbench environment, this Autodyne, if I just link these two cells together, uh, this simulation is going, only going to run in on a single core and for any realistic 3D simulation that's not going to be enough. Uh, but there's a pretty easy way to set up a multi-core simulation and uh, we do that by um, by generating a batch file. So I have a batch file here put into a temporary directory. If I look at what this batch file says It looks like this. So there is a Autodyne wrapper, um, Win64, there's an executable called Autodyne wrapper. It's in the ANSYS installation directory. Program files, ANSYS Inc., the version, AISOL, Autodyne, Win64, uh, if you're using Linux, it'll be Linux64, Autodyne wrapper.exe. And then there's a few inputs, um, dash no input, dash MPI, you have to specify <coughs> the MPI name, and then the machine. I'm only going to run this on my computer, which is uh, has this name, and I'm going to run it on four cores. So that's pretty much it. If we uh, go to the installation directory here, under ANSYS Inc., I have uh, the latest release turn uh, available as well, so I can update this to AISOL, Autodyne Win64, and you can see there's a Autodyne wrapper right there. So all I have to do to update to the latest release is change my script to this value. Okay, let's save it, and we'll go ahead and run this script. I put it in my temp directory. And this will allow you to run on multiple machines as well. Here we're running on a single machine. So we want to load. Uh, it's, it's still very helpful to set up the whole simulation in Workbench. So usually I go up to the setup position. And then if I go to view files, or I can do an update here. Um, you can see that I have a bunch of files available in E, that's, those are all the results, nothing in F yet. If I do a refresh here, it'll be linked to that file. Um, nothing in file. So I, I can just grab one of the Autodyne files in E here. You can right click and open containing folder. This will tell you where the file is located. So I can go to Autodyne here and say I want to open this folder here and uh, open the zero cycle would bring up the setup. All right, so now we can we're in the usual Autodyne environment and we can set up the simulation. So uh, parallel controls are already set up here. Um, for the output, we want to specify how often we want to refresh. This always tends to be a little bit low, so maybe every 10 iteration we want an update of what's happening. And how often do we want to save this? We probably want to save it, put a zero there, so 50 times. 
I'm only, only going to run this for a few iterations, but let's go ahead and run the simulation. So I specified four cores on my computer and uh, you know, it's taking it, Autodyne here generates four additional Autodyne workers and it's running um, in this in parallel. And again, here we're going to uh, update the results every every ten cycles. So uh, let me stop this here. And this is really the convenience of running it in the Autodyne GUI is you can easily stop, start. Uh, make changes. You can also extract different types of information from the simulation. So let's go to contour and look at the pressure. Okay, and run it for a few more iterations. Okay, we have to stop, save, and restart. Uh, to do this in parallel. So stop, save. And we have to restart. Uh, do a quick restart here. Um, so my temp folder. And we can save the model somewhere else so we can run this independent of the other auto dying simulation here. That's probably what I should have done. So let's go to contour pressure. Should show everything is constant right now. Let's check on the output. Okay, everything's set up the way we want it to be. So let's go ahead and run this. Simulation time is expected to be the same. The setup is the same. It's using the exact same solver, but the, the main difference here is that we have these additional uh, post-processing and dynamic post-processing tools that we can use on the fly. Alright, so I want to give you a quick idea of how to set this up in, um, get a run going in Autodyne. Um, again, the command is you go and find this Autodyne wrapper. 
uh, we have the, the, the extra input of uh, dash no input MPI. There's a uh, Intel MPI and Microsoft MPI on Windows machines. Then the machine name and how many cores. So that's all you need to run these simulations. Uh, once again, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at www.ozeninc.com. Thank you. Take care.